The left is at war with itself tonight over the fate of Minnesota Senator Al Franken, one day after radio host Leanne Tweeden accused him of kissing her and taking a lewd picture that you're seeing on the screen there without her consent. Slate.com says Franken ought to resign. So does Vice and two top Democrats in the state of Minnesota. A feminist writing for the Washington Post, though, says Franken ought to stay. Mother Jones's Kevin Drum says resignation would be a gross overreaction to the offense. And Coulter's been around a long time watching this kind of stuff on the American left for decades, and she joins us tonight. Anne, it's great to see you. Great to be so, here, Tucker. I assume that you know Al Franken because he's always around. He's always selling books. You are, too. So what's your informed opinion on this story? Um, well, technically, he's always selling books by putting me on the cover of his books. <laughs> I um, remember. My, my informed opinion is, for one thing, the Democrats do not care what Republicans have to say about it, so I may as well tell you the truth of what they ought to do. Um, I don't think any, any Democrats are watching Fox News, but if, if they were smart, they'd, they'd get rid of him. I mean, in Minnesota, he would be replaced by a much more woke Democrat, um, yeah. you know, maybe Keith Ellison, most likely, more likely a feminist. You have an actual photo here. I mean, can you imagine? if that were a member of the Duke lacrosse team, the, the, the lacrosse across the country would have to be shut down. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, I, I mean, what, you know, with the Roy Moore thing going on, which, by the way, footnote on that, I mean, that's getting to be like a mystery novel, the way the facts go back and forth. You think, you think, <laughs> well, that accuser looks pretty strong, and then, oh, except her stepson calls her a liar, and Judge Moore was the divorce judge, or, on, or the judge on her divorce case. It just keeps going back and forth, so there really is nothing resembling actual evidence in that case. In the case of Al Frank, and they have an admission, and uh, I think a pretty ugly photo combined with the accuser's point. If you saw her interviews yesterday, and I think she was extremely compelling and lovely, and she's not asking for his resignation or anything else, but it, it was part of, of humiliating her generally because she didn't enjoy having his tongue stuck down her throat. Um, and he ha has um, been very nasty to women um, and does have so, a history but, but, so of that. Here's not, the thing, though, that strikes me about Al Franken is he's nasty to everybody. He's an awful person who berates those <laughs> below him, takes credit for work he doesn't do, is a terrible boss, the staff hates him. He's just mercurial and mean, and I've seen it myself. And, like, that's not a big deal until some picture comes out, you know what I mean, with him doing something lewd, which I'm, of course, not defending. But why isn't there a penalty for being awful to your staff? Shouldn't that be a resignation worthy so offense? I'm so glad you mentioned that, Tucker, because I'm a lawyer can, who can actually explain sexual harassment to you. Curiously, why is sexual harassment or a hostile environment, why, why is that against a federal law? What, what makes that a federal issue? Um, well, I never understood this. and I mean, it was like not understanding what it meant to be nearsighted until I knew that if you have perfect vision, you're both nearsighted and, far, and farsighted. Interestingly, if you harass both men and women, you have not committed a federal violation. The reason hostile environments are against federal law and part of the civil rights law and 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 asking only your women employees to have sex or only your men and male employees to have sex is that it is discrimination on the basis of sex. Right. Um, so, in fact, someone who merely discriminates on the basis of which, sex. Which, which, which I'm against, of course. To but, both. But, but, but my only point is not whether it ought to be against the law, but if there's a senator, and there are a bunch of them up there, throw things at their staff, and there's this conspiracy of silence around it where no one ever says it. Like, that's awful behavior. No. You should not misuse your power to bully people beneath you. He has for years, and no one said word one about it. I don't know why. Um, no, that's true, though I do think there's a particular venom toward women in the case of Al Franken. Yeah, um, and right. the idea that. And the, the idea that no one talks about who the mean senators are, I promise you, as a former Senate staffer, that's all we talk about. Um, and I'll, well, I was saying, come on my show to name names. <laughs> well, exactly. I'd like to tell you the names because I thought this was interesting. Not of the mean ones, I'll be nice. But when I was at, working with the Senate Judiciary Committee, absolutely 100 percent unanimously, the two nicest senators to their staff were... I hate to admit the first one, Teddy Kennedy and yes. Jesse Helms. I knew that. I knew that. They were famous for that. <laughs> Ann Coulter, thank you.